My friend was getting rid of a bunch of DVDs and they asked if I wanted any and the one that immediately stood out to me was The Mummy. The 2017 one with Tom Cruise, which has been <laughs> on my list for a long time just to see how bad it was. Are you ready? No, but go ahead anyway. So Tom Cruise is this guy. That's probably the most accurate description I can think of for his character. <laughs> He's supposed to be a thief, but that gets thrown away in the first 10 minutes of the movie and not brought up again until the last 10 minutes of the movie when the mummy goes, you're a thief. And I went, oh yeah, he totally was. I had forgotten his entire character, despite him being on screen pretty much the entire time. And him and his buddy, they're looking for treasure. And they're in this Iraqi village because, you know, current events of 2017 and all that. And these insurgents are destroying history by shooting guns at gigantic statues, which seems like it would take a really long time. That would be like me taking on a giant wood carving project with a sewing needle. <laughs> there are no scenes that explain who these people are. We get about a minute and a half before the action starts. Explosions and gunfire and sinkholes and whatnot before I even learn anyone's name. And it doesn't stop. It's one action set piece after another without any time to take a breath or ask questions, which is probably good because there wouldn't be any answers. <laughs> the only time it takes a break is to dump out a landfill's worth of exposition that we'll get to later. So there's explosions, which causes all the gun guys to run away, which is very convenient, and Tom Cruise and his buddy find the mummy's tomb. And out of nowhere comes this archaeologist, Jenny, who serves as an exposition machine. Even though everything she says about the history of everything, we already saw in the flashback before she showed up. <laughs> I guess it was for people who got to the theater late. <laughs> <laughs> and inside this cave, the mummy is trapped in the pool from Super Mario 64. And Jenny says that Mercury was believed to contain the mummy's curse, which everybody runs with because even when we get to the huge Dark Universe science station later, they're still using Mercury for the same purpose. So I'm glad that the theory from 10,000 years ago panned out. And Tom Cruise figures out the pyramid puzzle to bring up the mummy. He shoots a rope and starts hallucinating because shooting the rope has caused him to become the mummy's chosen one, which I didn't really understand. <laughs> Wouldn't the person who actually opened the sarcophagus be the person that released her? He shot a gun at a rope. He didn't read any inscriptions or unlock any special door with a sacred key. He shot a rope. The Egyptian gods must be very literal. But then why wasn't it the first person to walk into the room? Or to touch the sarcophagus? Or to speak her name? Or be the first to look in the general direction of the pool? <laughs> I'm going to point out here that none of the characters like each other from beginning to end. There's no actual character development. Any perceived development is referenced in conversation instead of actually shown, so we never see these characters changing. There's one point where they try, where Jenny says to Tom Cruise, you're a good person, but nothing he has done in the entire movie shows that. He spends the whole movie going, wait, what? Wait, hold on, what does that mean? What? 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 Easiest dialogue he has ever had. <laughs> We actually book in the entire movie with his buddy talking to him, and he's his friend supposedly, but he's complaining about what are they even doing, and where are they even going, and how they don't seem to have any purpose, which was as close to breaking the fourth wall as this movie got. <laughs> and to be clear, Tom Cruise brought this dude back to life after he was dead for the majority of the movie. You would think the last thing he would be doing is moaning and groaning about anything. And I want to talk a little bit more about this guy. And near the beginning, when they dig up the mummy out of Silver Surfer's toilet, he's bitten by a CGI spider, and it causes the mummy to possess him or something, but it doesn't make him the chosen one for some reason. And we know he's possessed because he spends the next 15 minutes on screen constantly scratching his neck, or violently shivering, or going, ah! <laughs> right in front of everybody, but nobody even seems to notice. And then they're all surprised when his face turns into CGI and he starts stabbing people. So they kill him, but then he does an American Werewolf in London thing where only Tom Cruise can see him. And at first, it seemed like he was trying to help. But then it seemed like he was on the mummy side. And then he disappears for about 75 minutes and then shows up right near the end. And I guess it's on the mummy side after all. Maybe. <laughs> but then at the very end, like I said, Tom Cruise resurrects him and they're buddies again. So character motivations... This movie, mm. <laughs> So after they pick up the mummy, the plane they're all on is attacked by a bunch of CGI birds, which you probably saw in that trailer where they forgot to put in 95% of the audio, which is really funny, by the way. <laughs> and 
they crash, and the mummy finally gets out and starts sucking the life out of people. And after she starts reforming, she keeps all of her bandages on to remind us that she is indeed a mummy. <laughs> we also get a nice Easter egg as we see that the Konami code is imprinted on her face. I thought that was going to tie into the plot somehow, but unfortunately it did not. It would have been awesome if the Dark Universe included Red Falcon. And for some reason, she has four eyes. <laughs> I don't know what purpose or advantage that gives her, but evil needs no reasons. <laughs> Which is actually a better and more accurate tagline for this movie than what they actually used. And she's everywhere. I don't think she can warp. She has to walk or drive her mummy mobile or whatever. Because anytime we see her going somewhere, she's walking. But she manages to be in every place at the exact right time. It was very unclear. Maybe those DDR patterns on her face allowed her to dance her way to different places. Who knows? So the mummy's plan is to unleash the god of death using Tom Cruise's body by stabbing him with this magic knife that has a magic stone in the handle. And there's great dialogue, short, abrupt sentences that serve only to get to the next action scene. For example, they go, No stone, no ritual, no ritual, no curse. Yes. Boom, action scene. <laughs> because Tom Cruise is the chosen one, he's cursed to have the god of death possess his body once he's stabbed with the knife. So they figure if they destroy the magic stone that fits into the magic knife, they can stop the magic mummy from performing the magic curse. <laughs> but how do they come to the conclusion that the stone is the key? Why not destroy the knife or the mummy, the animate <laughs> thing that is actively <laughs> killing people? Still going on this dialogue, the humor has no sense of timing. It's thrown into the blender right along with romantic speeches, expository conversations, and world-ending threats. I honestly couldn't tell if some lines that could have been jokes were actually supposed to be jokes. It was not good writing. They end up trapping the mummy and putting her into their super dark universe science station. And it's run by Russell Crowe, who is Dr. Jekyll. And he spends the entire movie on the verge of turning into Mr. Hyde because subtlety this movie has not. <laughs> And they unnecessarily add to the sense of dread by having him have to assemble this Ikea level of injection contraption right before he changes every single time. His purpose in this movie is to both explain what the Dark Universe is going to be and spout off a bunch of repetitive lines about good and evil. And naturally, while he's explaining things about the Dark Universe, we see Dracula's skull and the creature from the Black Lagoon's arm in a jar. <laughs> and of course, there's a whole battle where Russell Crowe turns into Mr. Hyde and fist fights Tom Cruise. <laughs> And I was expecting some big CGI League of Extraordinary Gentlemen type deal, but it's just Russell Crowe acting more angry, which was somehow even more disappointing. <laughs> but Tom Cruise manages to revert him back to Jekyll with this patented quad injector. And while he's fighting Tom Cruise, Jenny is fighting some other dude in some other room, and at one point smacks him in the face with the book from the 90s mummy. For what? What? Ugh. <laughs> So motivations. The mummy wants to stab Tom Cruise to unleash the Death God, but it turns out that Russell Crowe also wants to do that. But then eventually Tom Cruise does it himself. So apparently everybody wants the same thing, but they're all opposing each other. And the mummy breaks out of the science station and summons the sands of Egypt to help her. But if the Egyptian gods are as literal as we've established before, that would take a really long time for the sand to get there. That's over <laughs> 2,000 miles and involves hopping over the Mediterranean. But instead, it looks like there's just a lot of glass creating this storm. And they show this glass shattering all over the place. And it's windows and museum displays, which is not really that much glass. But then out on the street, it looks like it's a lot of glass. And the museum guys call the archaeology guys a ways away and say, Look out! The mummy got loose. You guys should immediately lock yourselves in the giant room you're currently in that houses a thousand mummies. <laughs> And of course, the mummy wakes up all of the other mummies via satellite link, and they start to kill people. <laughs> but these mummies purposely removed the magic stone from the magic knife and hid it to prevent the mummy from performing the curse. But when she wakes them up, they do what she wants them to do, and they even bow down to her when she gets there. I should also point out that the mummy starts speaking in English after a while, because subtitles are hard. <laughs> And it was really funny that they even gave it an in-movie reason when she just says, Yeah, I decided to learn English while sitting chained up in this big room. And eventually, while Tom Cruise and Jenny are running away, there's a bunch of stuff underwater where they're trying to escape, but they're being pursued by swimming mummies. <laughs> 
But if you're a skeleton, wouldn't it be really hard to gain any momentum by swimming? You're basically pushing against the water to propel yourself forward. But if you're just bones, I wouldn't think you'd really be able to effectively go anywhere. Right? But they managed to keep up pretty well, and they end up killing Jenny. So the mummy now has Tom Cruise, who is the chosen one, the magic knife, and the magic stone. So she can perform the ritual and summon the god of death. But then she doesn't for ten minutes. She instead CGI punches Tom Cruise around while telling him to give in, give in. But all she has to do, what she's been spending the entire movie trying to do, is stab Tom Cruise's ass with the thing she's holding in her hand right now. There is nothing and nobody in the room to stop her. Even the mummies that were there before all dusted away because production costs, you know? I don't know why Tom Cruise had to give in. Was his willingness another requirement for this ritual to work? Because if so, he can just say, no thanks, and then the movie is over. <laughs> So then despite Tom Cruise spending this whole movie trying to stop people from stabbing him with this knife, he decides to stab himself with this knife. And this act unleashes the God of Death, which we can tell because now Tom Cruise has four eyes. <laughs> and he uses his new death power to kill the mummy, to resurrect Jenny, and then he leaves. So now he's the mummy, I guess, kind of. And he resurrects his buddy, who I forgot existed. And we finish the movie with the exact same conversation that started it, which is supposed to be comical, maybe. And I want to finish by talking about the Dark Universe. This was the start of Universal's Dark Universe thing, where they saw how Marvel did the Avengers and said, hey, we can just grab a bunch of classic characters we own, stick them all in the puree setting on our Universal Blender, and it'll come out as a delicious <laughs> billion dollar smoothie. And there's no concealment of this strategy because even before the actual movie starts, the Universal logo turns into a giant Dark Universe logo. <laughs> the lack of subtlety is slightly enhanced by half of this f***ing movie called The Mummy not being about The Mummy. <laughs> the Dark Universe was going to be an Avengers-type deal with Universal monsters like Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, etc. Before this movie, they actually tried to do this with Dracula first in that gem that you did not see. Dracula Untold, but after that movie sucked. <laughs> Universal said, actually, no, this, The Mummy, is the movie that will start our dark universe because this one will be good. And then after this movie unraveled, <laughs> Universal said, actually, we're not going to do this dark universe thing anymore. But then The Invisible Man came out and didn't immediately disappear from the public consciousness. <laughs> And Universal said, okay, that Dark Universe thing, it's back on. And actually, The Wolfman was the first Universal Classic Monster reboot in 2010, but that transformed into a dud. <laughs> but a mere four years later, Universal said, hey, let's reboot that for our Dark Universe. I suppose the core message of this whole thing is that Universal has no f***ing clue what they are doing. They're just throwing a bunch of shit at a wall to see what sticks, and then licking those smears off the wall for everything they're worth. <laughs> To make a long story short, you should totally check out The Mummy. <laughs> <laughs>